All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at wiring the electrical circuit today. Just how to install a typical box for an outlet. Okay. First thing, let's establish where it goes. So they go 12 inches up. I lost my tape measure. Are you kidding me? Here it is. Okay. And 12 inches to the bottom is pretty typical for this house. So I'm going to put a mark right there at 12. Okay. And the wires are already drilled out through here. That's a whole other video. We want to put this thing flush for sheetrock. So it'll be flush there. That's a piece of sheetrock there. Um, the sheetrock won't be installed when you do a house, but on the back of this, there's little marks here and little tabs uh, for doing this. Uh, what I like to do is I like to either have a piece of sheetrock or just a half inch piece of plywood I can go around and kind of hold it off with the right location where it goes right there and then when you hammer it in it'll be flush but what's actually better than flush is you don't want to stick out protruding past the sheetrock otherwise when you go to sheetrock this you can't sand it because you'll hit the plastic Okay, but that's, you know, you're an electrician, that's a sheet rocker's problem. Who cares about those guys? <laughs> that's a little joke if, if you finish <laughs> doing this stuff. Let's talk about the tools you need. Okay, you're going to need a knife, a pair of wire cutters. This is a crimper for crimping uh, the lug for the ground. The most important tool actually is this pair of pliers, as you'll see. Um, standard Phillips screwdriver. And this is old school. This is called an offset. That's a Phillips one. Here's a straight one. Okay. Uh, when I first started, that's what they used. Nowadays, I got this. I remember when Makita first invented that, that was a pretty big deal. So we're going to staple these wires. Um, To the stud wall here and what we'll do is we'll take our pliers and we'll break out one of the retention lugs and we're going to feed these through like this and the other one over now you can see i got what looks like a boatload of extra wire coming out of this but you're actually going to use all that okay so let's take these wires it's going to look really nice there. And we're going to staple them right like this. Now sometimes they get a little out of control and you can gently kind of hammer them back like that. Okay, we're not going to staple the heck out of this. We're just going to put one to retain it here for now. And we'll clean up the rest of this a little later. So, don't over staple that. I like it to have a little bit of movement and a little extra, uh, especially while you're making up the circuit, you can move it around. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to cut this, taking the knife all the way back, cutting through the Romex, which as we learned earlier was a brand name. So this is actually non-metallic sheathing connector conductor. Bring that all the way back, like that, a little more here, like that, cut this off, we'll pull that back out. Let's take notice there's a kind of a loom there on the ground, man, that's, that's a tough one, right. good stuff. we'll do is this. This is kind of ridiculously long. I'm going to cut this here. Now, it always makes sense to pull them long because you could always cut it off, but you can't add more. All right. Um, cut that like that. I've seen electricians go all the way through so that knife proceeds out the other side. And uh, you got to be careful. You can cut through your insulation doing that. 
there. Get out of there. Let's get the down here. Okay. So get this adjusted where I want it. There's kind of a sequence here when you do this, okay? <clears throat> you do the ground first, the white neutral second, and the hot, which is a black last, okay? So, and you want to pigtail your um, receptacle. So what I mean by that is you don't want to come in and out of this, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to take first the ground. The reason why you want to do the ground first is because ground is bare wire anyway. These things take up space inside the circuit box. You can cram the hell out of the ground without hurting anything. So what we'll do is we're going to take this extra wire and that's going to become our pigtails. Okay. So we take this ground. What we're going to do with this is we're going to find a reasonable length. And I, some people do it so it's only that far. But I like to think about it. What if I'm ever going to come back to this and work on it again? Okay. So... Let's go right about there. I'm going to take our pliers. I'm going to twist the hell out of this. And, uh, oops, what's going on here? There we go. Just got to get it started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to twist this thing quite a bit. Now, some inspectors, if they see a lot of twists on this, We'll kind of okay that, and you won't have to use a uh, little crimp connector. I'm going to show you in a second, okay? But what we're going to do here is we have this pigtail that'll go off to the plug, and what you can do is you can come in and put a wire nut on that, but they also like to see. At least one ground crimp on there. Slide that down like that. I like to slide it down in here. And then this is a crimp connector. You could use just a pliers or something. Crimp that down there so it can't break. Let's cut all this weirdness off right here. What's nice about this, you want to go add something, you can get to it and work on it. Here's the deal. So you could take this, shove this way in here, like that, and it's already not insulated anyway. So you can be rough with it. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to leave this in a nice location so it'll hook right to our ground lug right there. Okay, next, we're going to do the neutrals. Okay. And the deal with the neutrals is you don't want to manhandle them, but you can manhandle them more. Man, is that sexist? I guess it is. <laughs> more than a hot. So uh, we're working with number 14, and I'll take my wire strip. Now we want to strip this pretty far back. I'll show you why. Okay, so we'll strip this thing pretty far back. It's a little dark in here. So this, okay. like this. Okay, we'll put these three together. Now notice how long that is. We'll cut that. Okay, we'll put these three together like that. Grab our pliers. Twist this up. Okay. And I left this a little long, so if we ever need to come back, we could do it. Now, uh, there's various kinds of wire necks. We have reds, which I'll be using for this. We could actually even use a yellow for this, but usually I use a yellow for uh, attaching a like a light in a fixture. And then we have this combination red yellow. Alright, let's use that. Okay. And we have a gray, that's for big thick, like maybe using number 10 wires or a whole bunch of wires together. So let's use a combination. And before you do this, usually these are all at different lengths. This is pretty nice, but it's nice to take your pliers, make a cut so they're all the same. Take your wire nut, twist that on there. I'm not sure how you do this if you're left-handed, it'd be kind of weird. Because it's a right-hand thread. I guess lefties are used to that. And then when you look at your uh, plug, okay, 
the copper one over here, or the brass colored, is going to be where the hot goes. And well, these are both brass. You usually have a mill finish on the left. Okay, so we're going to touch this on the left side, moving the hot over, and give it a nice fold like that. And we can smoosh that in there. Okay, and then there's our pigtailed hot or uh, neutral. We do the hot now. Come over here, cut these the same length. Strip this back. This one. Okay. This together. This. What you want to do is you want to line up the insulation back there. Don't worry about the, the length of the copper wire sticking out. We'll cut that to be the same length later. Okay, twist these all around nice and uniform. If something gets out of control, just kind of try to tweak it back with your pliers. Cut this all off flush. I'm going to use this one down on there. Twist that up like that. Okay. And then we're going to put this in there and fold it in there nice like that. Get it in the back. Okay. So why you do that one last. Okay, we're gonna cut these all the same length. And what we want is we want to be able to, you know, fit it in there. You don't want it too long, but you don't want it short either. Okay, so we'll just cut all that off. You can see out of all that there's a little bit of waste, but these are almost long enough to use pigtail on another uh, circuit. Okay, so strip that. Strip that. Oops. So we're going to hook this thing up, let's screw those in, since these are in parallel anyway, we don't want that sticking out. Okay, so let's hook up our ground first, and notice when I go with the screwdriver like this, okay, it's going to turn this direction, so we want to make a curve this way <laughs> for the right hand rule, that would be negative K. This thing has a little uh, hole in it that helps us make a, a curve that'll go in there. Put her on there. Like that. Uh, sometimes you can take your needle nose and kind of uh, crimp it around there. And uh, you could do this with the offset, or you could use a standard screwdriver. Most people have a standard one, so I'll do that. Here. Tighten that up. Let's go do the neutral. I should just give that a little more. Thing. So the neutral's on the same side. We're going to do it that way. And if you do it backwards, it's not that great an idea, but since this is solid wire, it's not the end of the world. But if you do that on braided wire, that would not be cool. Up. These things also have plug-ins which save time, but I wouldn't put those on my house. Okay, now when you look at this one from this side, okay, it's going to curve this way. All right. So we'll take this, and you know what? I'm going to curve it the wrong way to show you how to deal with that. So let's just say you did this. Okay, and you did it this way. And you go, you put it on there like, oh, that's backwards. Okay, well, let's copy it. Okay. So, you could do that, okay. not that big a deal, put that thing on there. Notice I'm holding in with my thumb, I could kind of take some needle nose and have it help wrap around there. Take that thing, I'm putting tension on it, so it's I'm tensioning it back with my thumb so that this thing is on there tight, it's not sticking out like that. Let's go tighten that up. This is about how much wire I like to have hanging out of there. If there's every problem you need to recept fix this receptacle, someone yanks the vacuum cleaner out of it or whatever, you have some wire to work with. So what you do is you kind of fold this back in kind of a pretty insulation. Of course, when you, when you do the final assembly, there'll be sheetrock on this. Okay, and we're going to put that there. And then, I don't know, we can just use this thing. Get her started on one side. 
to start on the other side. Like that. All right. Nowadays, most people won't even bother with that. Come in here like this. And there you go. That's the receptacle. You can kind of square that up when you have sheet rocks and you can see it. And we're done. So, first thing, do the ground. You can cram the hell out of it. It's bare wire anyway. Second thing, do the neutral. You can half cram it. Because remember, back at the... Um, circuit box it's connected to the ground anyway you want to be really gentle with the, the hot wire which is the black one and you know pull out plenty of wire you could always cut it off but you can't add it back that's all for this one